Welcome to the Thread to Mend podcast. I'm Taylor, coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland. This is my dog, Starship Enterprise. And this is the third time I am recording this podcast today because I didn't have enough storage on my computer. And I finish and I try to open it up and it's not there. <laughs> so I'm going to talk pretty fast uh, because I don't have a ton of time, but I do want to record this today. So I have a few things to show you. Uh, the first is a pair of socks I just finished last night. I stayed up till like 11.30, just way past my bedtime. And I cannot remember for you all where I got this yarn, um, but I will link to the Etsy store below. I call this my rainbow birch socks. And you can see, obviously, there's a fair bit of color pool in here throughout. Um, which I think is fun because it kind of gives this rainbow astral plane thing effect. The heels, toes, and cuffs are knit in Barrett Wool Company. Actually, the same yarn I'm wearing in this sweater. And I, I'm i pretty happy that these are finished. Um, I don't know when I'm going to wear them because I'm already busting out my hiking socks in this like 40-something degree weather. My feet get really cold and I need thick, warm socks. These are a superwash wool in the um, body of the sock, but the uh, heels, toes, and cuffs are not superwash. Um, so I do plan to hand wash these, obviously. Um, yeah, so I knit these from the top down with a fish lips kiss heel and standard decreasing at the toe. And I'm, I only knit one pair of socks at a time. So every time I finish one, I'm really excited to cast on something else. Um, I don't know yet which pair of socks I'm going to knit, but I did buy a, uh, oh, I probably have it right over here. I'm just going to, oh, I, I try not to, well, I can't say that I try not to do anything yet because I've only recorded a few of these, but I just got this skein of yarn back over here that I, it's very autumnal, autumnal. When I was at Rhinebeck, it was like a joke how hard I, I can't, I, I can't spit that word out. Auton, autumnal, autumnal, anyway, um, there's a fair little bit, it's not even really green, it's more ambery, kind of like a, that's kind of, it's not really green, but it's sort of green. I feel like it's green enough to be, this could be like my Christmas socks, but like I mentioned, you know, these are just as um, lightweight as the previous ones. And I don't know, maybe I'll save these for the spring or the summer. Um, to have a little bit thicker yarn, I like to cast on, knit some socks. I, so I bought that skein. Oh, here, let me tell you what it is. I bought this skein from Little Lion Head Knits on Etsy. And she has a very well curated shop. I bought that in this project bag here that is a Charlie Harper illustration. And with that came these five minis, which are, I really like all these colors together. I like that it kind of is a little bit, I could make it a rainbow if I wanted to. And then this blue has a little bit of this pink in it. So that little pop of pink feel like I can digest. I'm not a super pink, I'm not a pink and purples girl, but I like this nice cool pink color. So these are going to be a pair of striped socks. Um, I don't know yet when I'm going to cast those on, but maybe in the spring since they're nice and springy. In this project bag here I have a work in progress that I've been carrying around with me and it is, um, it's going to be a design I'll come out with soon. Uh, not soon, really. I'm taking my time working on it, working it out, but I do hope to um, publish a pattern for it in the spring. Uh, it's a single skein project, nice and easy, fingering weight. And now that I've finished those socks and the body of this sweater, this sweater is for my mother-in-law that I'm knitting with my hand spun. This is the first hand spun um, from a Cordell fleece uh, that I bought in 2000 and 
15 or 16, probably 16. And uh, I just finished that. So now I have my size eight needles freed up for a new shawl, not new shawl pattern, but a new shawl project. And my sock weight needles freed up for another one. So um, the sweater is one work in progress. I'm still working on my brioche shawl. I've probably only knit a couple rows of this guy since last episode, but I did sew this project bag over the weekend that I'm storing it in. Um, this is just a uh, scrap of fabric my friend Kelly Laughlin gave me. Uh, she reupholstered a couch or a chair in this. Um, Kelly is a super talented marble artist. She teaches people in Baltimore, in the Baltimore area, how to do like marble paper. It's really fun. We did that one day in the dining room and I loved it. So if, if um, I'll, I'll try to link below to what she's got going on. So if you're in Baltimore and you want to try paper marbling, you can give that a shot. Um, so there's a lot of mistakes in this sewing project. My friend Michelle generously gifted me her old um, embroidery machine and I haven't yet tried to do the embroidery aspect of it so you do have to hook up a computer and all that. Technology is not easy. Uh, it's not like a thing I'm inspired to work with. Uh, I have a hard enough time just getting this podcast to record to my computer because I have to really I have to optimize my my computer software situation but I haven't taken the time to do that yet so uh, I just basically used this machine to do some basic sewing um, and I was playing around with the the fancy stitches and thought I would try that out on the top stitching here which you know didn't turn out bad on this side and you get to that side and it's like whoa <laughs> the, the other side isn't even any better um, so that's a little bit of a mess it's okay you know gives the character um, also, I did not measure correctly the length that my side pieces ought to have been. So they were off, I think, because I didn't uh, account for some kind of seam allowance. And uh, yeah, so this is a just sort of a prototype for some additional bags I might produce in the future. Um, I'm really just trying to make stuff with what I have. I'm trying to bust my fabric stash, my fiber stash, my yarn stash any way I can and um, I don't know how many more bags I can make that anyone would want with what I have so I don't know what I'm going to invest more time and money in in terms of making to sell um, and, I, and I'm not uh, I don't like making things to sell because they well okay I take that back um, it's not fun when you make stuff and it just sits on in your store. <laughs> but I understand, I think right now I only have a, a couple hand knit things for sale and, and those, you know, you gotta find the right buyer. Um, so what I do like about this bag is that there's this area here with no zipper. So I can put this on the ground and I can make sure that my yarn carries over this edge so that it's not getting caught on the zipper here. So inside I have two skeins of yarn and my brioche project and there's plenty of space and I can zip it up without worrying about anything getting caught. So I think that this would comfortably hold like a three skein project, like maybe a fingering weight sweater, nice and comfy. It's a 12 inch zipper across. So you can imagine just about how big this is, you know, 12 by eight inches or so. I didn't write down any measurements. I just kind of uh, picked out a piece of fabric and knew I was working with a 12 inch zipper and started cutting stuff out and sewing it up. And obviously if I thought uh, planned a little bit better, things would have worked out a little more streamlined, but I'm happy with what I got. I don't think I showed you the inside yet. So this little tab matches the interior fabric and there's a pocket inside for little notions perfect size to pop your hand in and reach down there to the bottom of it. Um, and so you do have to kind of like pop that edge in, but I think I found a good way to kind of clean up these corners so that it does start to fold in nice and easy there. 
it's definitely, um, I love duck, duck cloth for bags. It's so sturdy and nice. Um, I could have done a really clean press on this, but I regret not doing later. So there's that. Those are all my knitting works in progress at the moment. Um, not a lot of knitting happened this weekend, but I did sew that bag in another bag that I've already given away to uh, Kelly, my sister-in-law. She came over uh, because right after I uploaded that podcast, I think it was after I uploaded the podcast last week, uh, my neighbor brought a kitten over that she had found in our neighbor's yard. It was like crying all day because the mom had abandoned it after moving her litter somewhere safer. And so I've been fostering a kitten for a short while and um, I was feeding it formula, um, kitten meal replacer, KMR, KMR. And I guess uh, because not all kittens really respond well to it, it needed to be diluted and because it wasn't, um, it was kind of upsetting the GI tract of the kitten. So I was a little nervous and I contacted Kelly who um, is a veterinarian and she came by and she's now fostering that kitten. So it is in really good hands. And uh, one project I plan to cast on now that I've freed up some needles are these, um, on the front page, Maggie's Mittens. Aren't those cute? Kitten mitts. Kitten mitts. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to show you that so close. Gotta hide the details. Um, this is a pay for pattern that I found on Ravelry. And I have, uh, I did a lot of dyeing this weekend that I'm gonna show you. It's not up for sale, I just dyed for myself. Um, but I, I have a lot of this Cascade 220 in ivory and white in my stash that I purchased um, at a time where I was crocheting a lot of blankets and had a plan for an afghan that never came to fruition. So I used this um, to do dyeing experiments with. And because I needed black for that project and a worsted weight and I didn't have it, I just popped one in the kettle. Um, this one I didn't saturate enough. So, um, and this is the, the last thing I did of the day. So I was just kind of done. And I'm gonna, after recording twice, I realized that there's not quite enough contrast between this heather gray and the white for the kittens to overlap in the pattern. You can see that um, the eyes and nose of the kitten beneath it are the contrast color. Um, and so when the gray and the white cats are stacked, I want to make sure that you can see it has a face. So I'm going to pop this black back in the dye pot, really saturated, get a nice solid black. And then um, I'll use this as the exhaust bath to just, warm, to just darken it up a little bit and give a little bit more contrast to the white. Um, so that I have a better contrast there. I love using my acid dyes to re to transform my stash yarn to make it more usable. And I did that this weekend with all of my Superwash DK weight yarn. So in my stash, uh, I have only three and a half skeins of Superwash DK weight yarn that I would love to work into a project together, but none of, I didn't like the colors that I had. Uh, I bought them online and, and you, I think that I'm gonna like what they could work up to and then I, I've seen in person and it just doesn't tell the same story uh, that I was planning to. So I over dyed three skeins this weekend. The first is the Murakami colorway from Madeline Tosh. Um, you can see it has all these speckles here that are very well evenly distributed throughout the yarn. There's not even like one area where the yarn has a concentration of any one speckle color, which I think is really nice. Um, but this was a pure white. And I, I mentioned in the past that I don't really knit with a lot of white. Um, I don't wear a lot of white. And so I put this in a bath with a crew um, to warm it up, to give it a little bit more depth. And I like it. It's it's fine. Um, I don't know that I would have bought this skein in person, but um, I like it more. And I think it's going to be a really great um, 
project either with a striping pattern or a textured striping pattern, or maybe a brioche pattern with this skein here. This is a, um, so here you can almost see the original color. It's this light blue. And this is where the yarn was tied off a little too tight and the, the dye didn't really saturate that area, which I kind of regret not catching sooner. So I would have maybe over dyed that better. Um, but this I over dyed with some olive speckles that came out very dark black and some uh, golden ochre speckles that came out kind of red. And then I threw in um, some sunshine yellow to the bath to really brighten up this bluish still skein. Um, so I think that that, grew, that blue might kind of give like little flecks of light throughout. And if it, this is the back side to a two color brioche, I think that the blue like won't even bother me at all. It'll probably be very subtle. I'm not a professional dyer. Um, but I do experiment from time to time. I'm thinking about um, experimenting more with natural dyeing because I finally dyed up and I don't know why I did these in black. I wasn't really thinking. I just wanted to do it. But um, a while ago I was planning, like many of us, to just like put more stuff up for sale on Etsy and, and dye some things to sell. And I contacted uh, Abundant Earth Fibers for um, some samples because she does wholesale for white merino mill spun yarn and I dyed them and I just love her yarn. I love it. Um, so this is the sport weight and it's just so squishy. It's not super wash, which I like. And um, I really like the sport weight. I feel like these would make really great socks. It has a really nice high twist, which you might not be able to see. Obviously I dyed this the worst color I probably could have to show you on camera. <laughs> it's like a void. Um, so I have a little worsted skein. I'm not super uh, I'm not super into working with worsted worsted weight yarn right now. Um, and this fingering, it's a really light fingering. So this would make a great light sock weight. Uh, this would make a really great lightweight sock. What the heck is sock weight? I see that all the time. And I don't know if it's heavy fingering or light fingering. Sock weight. Why is that a thing? It, I mean, it, it should be a thing, but it should be like a standard thing. I don't know. Does someone know? Someone out there know what a standard sock weight is? Is it light fingering? Is it fingering? <sighs> this would make a really nice lightweight sweater. Look, I mean, look at how springy. It's just so springy. I love her yarn. Um, I don't know if she's still doing the same wholesale rates and I have not yet um, priced out what wholesale undyed yarn uh, costs, but I think I would be more than happy to invest a little extra in having this yarn as a base instead of something, something milled in, in China or shipped overseas or there's that. Um, let's see. No, I'm moving fast because like I mentioned, this is the third time I recorded this. Oh, I have one more skein to show you. This is the Fields Notes colorway in Madeline Tosh. It still has so much hair stuck in it. I don't know how that happened. But I over dyed this with golden ochre, a little bit of black speckle, and came out nice and warm. I think this would be a really great contrast if I need a little extra yarn to maybe finish off the edging um, to a project here or maybe incorporate more stripes if I need a little extra rough edge. And I have one more planned project that I hope to cast on. I was hoping to cast this on before work today, which I don't think is going to happen now that I'm recording this three times. I'm going to let that go. I'm not even going to bring it up again. Uh, okay, so that is the Range Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I, this is not a new pattern, but it does use four skeins of worsted weight yarn. And I have one-off skeins of worsted weight yarn that have just been sitting in my stash. And I'm trying to bust my stash. So 
I pulled out, these were my original colors I'm planning to knit with. Let's say. Boom. Is this not me? Mm -hmm. Is everything I've made green? <laughs> everything I made for myself. These two here, this one and this one, are both from Good Karma Farm in Maine. I bought these on my honeymoon. Brian and I just like sh put the address in our map and showed up and it is this uh, couple. They have a mill in their um, like barn, garage area and they raise animals and they mill their own yarn and they dye it up there in their studio space and they were just so welcoming and generous and I bought these both from their um, kind of like mill ends basket so I got a really good price on these. I have no idea what the yardage is and uh, it's it's a alpaca wool blend. This one here I bought not this past year at Rhinebeck but the year before and I've lost the tag but it's this amazing um, woman who also raises her own fiber. Um, it's a blend of a little bit of Angora, a little bit of alpaca, and a nice fine wool. It's so soft. Um, it's a little bit more velvety. This is like really slick alpaca soft and then this is like velvety soft. And um, she also grows all of the material that she naturally dyes her fiber with. So this is naturally dyed, which I really like. Now this pop of color on the end I bought from the wool workshop in Roanoke, Virginia years ago and it's um, grown in, in, I don't know if it's grown, but it's definitely spun in Virginia. So this is a local yarn to that shop. And I, on camera I really like these colors together, um, but in person this is really bright. It's not highlighter yellow bright but it's, it's like classic highlighter bright. Um, like those old school highlighters that are not the neon, they're the standard yellow. And I'm afraid I don't have enough yardage because her pattern calls for 415 gram skeins. So what, four ounces? I think I talked about that last episode. And I definitely don't have enough of that and at least these two. So I don't know if I can just knit this shawl a little smaller, if I should, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, if you're familiar with the range shawl pattern, um, if you take the time to check it out on Ravelry, and you can see that its construction is from like one corner, and you increase, and then you just get wider and wider, and you work it a certain amount of rows so that it creates this very obtuse angle shawl. Um, what would you do if you think you don't have enough yarn? Would you still knit it in these four skeins? Would you add a fifth color? It does have like, I, mean, I think that would be, that would more, that would complicate the pattern more than messing with the math. I was thinking of adding in a little bit of arbor which falls right between these two colors, but it's so close to both of them. I mean, it's really close to this. It maybe isn't enough contrast to put these two together. And this is very, um, I would hold two together and I, and I have even less yardage of this than, than this. Um, I do have a second skein of this that I've kind of cracked into in an Afghan project. So maybe I can make up for it by doing one area a little thicker. Um, I do plan to, I'm just gonna drop this in the basket. I do plan to knit this uh, gradient in reverse. So when she's wearing this shawl, the corners ends are the lightest color and the middle is the darkest. But in all the photos where you see her wearing it, you see the, um, you know, it doesn't, my thoughts are not translating in this photo that I can show you. But I remember thinking, I would rather the yellow show less than the dark. And so I'm gonna do the dark colors at the corners and the yellow in the center. So when I'm wearing it, the yellow is behind me and the green is more near my face. I don't know how, I mean, 
It's just that it's yellow. It's like bright yellow. Which I like, but it's um it's a pop of color in a very muted project. Um so I I've taken the time today to talk out loud about that project enough that I feel like I'm I'm comfortable again knitting it in the um, bright yellow instead of the the muted arbor because of the contrast it gives between the um, the second largest yellow and green green and yellow. Wow, I think that I've mowed through all of that stuff really fast. I'm really sorry if I, I felt rushed in this podcast episode today. I, I was looking forward to, to um, recording it so much that I didn't want to give up. And I, I um, kind of just rushed. So I showed you the rain shawl I'm going to cast on, the mittens I'm going to cast on. Um, I'm going to add links below to this Etsy shop where I got this beautiful bag, mini skein set, and that skein of sock yarn. And yeah, so all that I have on my needles right now, other than those two planned projects, is my brioche shawl, my hand spun sweater, and I'm, I'm also going to cast on a pair of mittens for myself. I I have this book right here. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to this, but I am. Have you seen this book? You've probably seen um, some of these patterns out there. And they're very, like, childlike, fun. Ooh, this is kind of cool. A little basic, you know, design. But there's this, I collect... I don't really collect anymore, but I have within my house a collection of ceramic owls. And I thought it would be nice to have, you can see here, these owl mitts. I did edit, so, okay, you see the face on that owl? It looks mad. So I used a pencil to color in the chart. I don't know if I should show you the chart up close because this is like a paper pattern on mine. But I colored the eyes in to make them bigger, to make it look less mad. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, very slightly modify this, and I think I'm gonna try um, on the Charm of It podcast, which I'm sure you watch because it's an amazing podcast. I love catching up on that um, series of episodes. She talks about I cannot tell you which episode, but she talks about adding a. I want to say it's a lifeline. It's not a lifeline, but you add in a, um, you basically take a piece of scrap yarn about where you want your mitts to fold over and you knit with the scrap yarn across. And then just like you would with an afterthought heel, you go back and you pick it out. You put the stitches on your needle and you knit um, a little bit of ribbing to close that off so that you can make these gloves convertible. So I'm thinking about doing that um, and maybe um, adding the con conductive thread that I uh, was reminded exists uh, to make these gloves usable with my smartphone um, when the time comes to wear gloves. So um, I already bought the yarn for that project. It is in my dresser. I caked it up because I thought I was going to cast it on a week or two ago, but never got around to it. This is Harrisville Designs yarn. I think it's called Spin Whatever. No, that's Shetland. Um, flywheel. Pure virgin wool. 170 yards, 50 grams. This is the Penstock colorway. It looks black. It reads black. But it's really um, pre-dyed fiber that's parted and spun in a mix. So I have here, there's yellow and green and blue and red. It's very primary um, fibers. Oh, that's not the right thing. Can you see that? There's a little bit of a tweedy effect in some areas, which I think you can kind of pick out if you don't want it to look super tweedy. 
And then this is the same. It's also a worse woolen spun yarn, and it's a got mixes of red, green, and blue in this yellow color. So I'm gonna do those owl gloves with this. And I have two skeins of each in case I need more than one. I love storing my yarn in dressers. I have these little um, cedar flocks that I have in each drawer and I just recently refreshed them with cedar essential oil and lavender essential oil. So like I've tucked them in every corner of my house. I have yarn out or stored away and it has actually made our house smell like good everywhere. Every time I open my door it's a it's very fragrant. So I've not ever had a moth problem in the couple years that I've been using the storage system, but I don't want to ever discover one. So I'm taking a little precautionary measure. Shippy's kind of not feeling great right now. She had all of her shots yesterday. So um, I don't even know which ones. She doesn't, she didn't need a rabies shot. She got all the others, Parvo and Distemper and maybe Lyme. Um, but she's just like, oh, she doesn't feel good. She does not like shots. <laughs> um, so that's all I have to show you. I do need to take her on a walk before I leave in about 30 minutes for work. So we're going to head out. Um, thank you so much for uh, watching today's podcast. Um, if I didn't mention this already, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Taylor E. Owen. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Um, if you're a new viewer, thank you so much for making it till the end. And if you have any comments, suggestions, or uh, constructive criticism, you can leave that below in the comments box and I'm happy to respond. I hope you all have a great day and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye!